Hi everyone, Pete Calamain here. I hope you're having an awesome day. Now in this short video, I would like to explain to you how USB-C power delivery works and how you can implement it in your system. By the way, if you want more hints and tricks like this, feel free to join my free community. It's in the links below. Now, first of all, USB-C power delivery, you will have seen it before. It's often used now to charge uh, laptops, smartphones. It has become a European standard as well to charge smartphones. You see charges like this that can plug in your wall with different power levels up to 100 watt maximum over USB-C. But what is the USB-C power delivery and what are the different modes? It can feel very confusing, but I'm going to try and explain it to you in a very simple way so that you'll never forget how it works. Uh, now, we were limited, let's say, with standard USB uh, and even with USB-C without power delivery to certain power level limits. Uh, so USB 2.0, we had 2.5 watts, 3 was on 4.5 watts. On USB-C, you can go up to 3 amps, so 15 watts maximum, but that's certainly not sufficient to, to charge a laptop. Um, or if you want to have quick charging of your smartphone, the 15 watts uh, will also be a, a relatively slow one, let's say. So how can we increase that? But that is where the USB-C power delivery comes in. The main goal is there to deliver more power. And so it's based on yeah, uniformly charging laptops, smartphones as an extension of these telephone charging standards. But basically it will define how your device communicates over USB-C to a device that can deliver power. That's the gist of it. And this varies voltages and currents. Now, important thing to mention before we start here, USB-C or a USB-C connector doesn't mean that you do have power delivery. Uh, so that's an important one to watch out for. You also see that there's different uh, types and flavors of USB, 3.2 version, uh, several generations. It does not mean necessarily that power delivery is on board if you have a 3.2, for instance, let's say. So that's also important to watch out for if you want to know for your device that it might be either indicated with symbols like this, whether or not it is present or it's in your data sheet. But USB-C connector doesn't mean you have power delivery. Important one. Now, the first power profile is a relatively simple power profile, I'd say. There's five profiles in there. In fact, there's a sixth reserved one, but these are the five ones that you will be using. And basically, your device over the CC, typically over the CC pins, that's a bidirectional data channel, will communicate with the device that can deliver power to your device, how much you would like to take, how much you are requesting. Now, there's a couple of different power levels. It can increase from... Uh, so the voltages increase, you have 5, 12 or 20 volts. The currents being drawn to 1.5 or 3, even up to 5 amps. So what you see is that there's now a couple of profiles ranging from 10 watts all the way up to 100 watts. Your device, if it's a laptop, will try to communicate over its CC pins to have this profile 5. Um, it's, if it's a smartphone, it will be much lower, of course, maybe profile 2 or 3 where it wants to communicate again with your charging device or the power supply, I'm able to get this. Now that's the 1.0 profile. Um, there's also 2.0, 3.0, 3.1 profile. If you're not confused yet, I'm going to try not to make it confusing, but the basic thing here is to see that the voltages have changed a bit and there's no fixed profiles anymore. So the current varies a bit, the output power varies a bit, and this image makes it very clear. So at, these, at this voltage level, uh, you can go up to 15 watts. And then basically from here on, you take over on the 9 volts. From here on, from 27 watts onwards, it's on 15 volts. And then from 45 watts onwards, it's on the 20 volts all the way up to 100 watts. Now, the interesting thing here is that there's more granular control compared to this version 1 power profile. And that's the main thing I think to keep in mind. If you want to even step up, power, um, for instance, for maybe powering uh, big external monitors. Then there's the 3.1 profile that acts extra higher voltages. The currents yeah, all the way up to 5 amps as well. So maximum in the power delivery uh, that exists today is 48 volts, 5 amps, so 240 watts that you can charge. Now that's the basics on USB-C power delivery standards. If you keep this picture in mind, you, you will understand what is happening. Now, how to implement it in the system? Um, let's maybe step to uh, a topology. There's a couple of um, options here, but this is a standalone USB PD controller that you could use. What this controller will do, basically, it will um, 
communicate with your external system and then tell your power supply how much you can deliver. Um, that's the simple explanation of it. So I made a small schematic here uh, to indicate to you how you would do that typically. Now let's maybe start on the USB-C power delivery controller. So you are inter interfacing, it's not on my schematic here, with an external USB-C connector. So there you are interfacing to your device. You have these CC pins and basically these CC pins, the communication you have with this controller, will tell the controller how much the device is capable to draw and how much power we need to supply. Now then this controller will switch uh, that supply on or off. There will be a certain output voltage over here that has to be set. Um, now how is that controlled? Well, basically we have a DC-DC converter. We want to have several output voltage levels. So for instance, if we go back to the, let's say a relatively simple profile to make it easy, there's 5 volts, 12 volts and 20 volts. What we would need to have is here the ability to generate 12 volts, uh, the 20 volts, the 5 volts at the output here. And that is being controlled by the feedback pin. You need to be able to have these different voltage levels with this DC-DC converter. There's a certain output uh, power limit or current limit, of course. Uh, this one can go up to 3 amps. So this guy will limit the final power, of course, that you can deliver. Now, how is this voltage set? That is being set by this controller. And you can use some kind of a resistor feedback network where either resistors are switched off or on. Uh, so that in your resistive feedback network, you are either um, setting this guy up to deliver 12 volts, 20 volts, 5 volts. So that is being controlled by this USB-C power delivery controller that will basically switch in any of these resistive dividers to get the correct output voltage. And that is basically a very simple way to interact with your device. The device will communicate. You will set the exact voltage that is then, um, of course, related to that power profile that your device needs. And basically in that way, you have a relatively simple system um, to implement USB-C power delivery in your own hardware if you need to implement it. So I hope this video was interesting for you. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. If you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you like the channel, feel free to subscribe. If you want more hints, tips and tricks like these, feel free to join my free community. It's in the description below. Have a very nice day. Bye bye.